Thank you, Harold, and good morning, everyone. It's uh, an absolute pleasure to be uh, invited to the uh, live export uh, conference. Uh, it's also a pleasure to be a town at Crown Towers. I don't often get to stay in places as palatial as Crown Towers. I knew it was palatial when I was having breakfast this morning and the woman beside me ordered a soy latte decaffeinated. I mean, really, why bother? Uh, this morning, it's, it's, it's uh, just, just a quick, quick overview of the LEP, LEP program, program and where your funds as an industry are invested. Uh, this is your program, uh, and we are the custodians at, at MLA and Life Corp around how you would like your uh, funds invested. And, and on that note, the transparency that MLA has gone through in the last couple of years on our website through programs and, and projects is now very detailed. So any levy payer or anyone that's involved in the livestock industry in Australia uh, contributing, contributing to levies, can, can see exactly, exactly on our website where the money goes, what money comes in, and, and where it is spent and what the outcomes are. Uh, and MLA is very proud of the fact that we've uh, put a lot of time and effort into updating it annually as we uh, publish new budgets and report on previous years. Uh, as I said, we're the service provider the industry. Uh, I've got 10 minutes, so just 100 slides. Um, so I'll get through the first one rather quickly. So there's, there's about the, uh, the Joint Livestock Program. Uh, and as I said, it's, it's your program. So on that note, if you have complaints or want to see further direction around what should be covered through the program, uh, please contact us. My email address is sam.brown at livecourt.com.au. Um, so you can see that, that the focus of the whole program, that animal welfare consumes about 41% of the spend, R&D 32%, and of that R&D at 32%, there's a million dollars that comes in from uh, federal government matching as well. Uh, Co-funding programs, of well, uh, projects, of which there are over 30, and then market access 8%, and productivity gains at, at 7%. Uh, and, and that's one thing that we need to do as an R&D organisation, and as an industry, is always recognise the uh, matching funds that we receive from the federal government because it is the largest part of income into our industry. And here's where, where the, um, the money is going into those key markets. Obviously Indonesia, Vietnam, Southeast Asia and the Middle East. Uh, and then two, we do a lot of work around co-funding with individual live exporters and people across the value chain that put their own money up and we match that money through projects, uh, particularly around animal welfare and productivity through the value chain. Um, and then, obviously, obviously the, goals the goals and objectives, and objectives uh, are set out in numerous documentations and across, the, across, across our, our websites, websites as well, well around using, using people, people and skills across the value chain to deliver for you as an industry. industry. Uh, the, the live export, export industry is vitally important to, to the Australian producing sector. sector. It, it keeps our industry uh, competitive, uh, and, and we all operate under global forces. forces. Yes, the Australian agriculture sector, particularly livestock sector, is doing particularly well at the moment. Uh, I, I saw first, first cross use in, in, in the Eastern Seaboard Eastern making $366, $366 uh, this, this week. week. It is, it is uh, a great, great time, time to be in our industry. industry. Uh, FMD, FMD is at a high. That's, that's not, not what you think. That's farm, farm management deposits are at $6 billion dollars at the end of last financial year. year. Uh, three, uh, three, $3 billion of that is from the red meat, meat sector. sector. Our Australian, Australian agriculture, agriculture sector, sector uh, particularly the livestock sector, is in a fantastic position. I know from the live export sector that's probably not it's probably not the greatest of trading times for you as live exporters, but anyone that's been around our industry for a long period of time knows that these cycles come, come and go. So from an MLA point of view, I want to finish up by recognising Jeff Maynard, who uh, at next week's AGM in Alice Springs will uh, um, finalise his term of six years on the MLA board. Uh, in the time that I've been in MLA, Jeff's been there uh, six, six years, He's, He's been, been a strong, strong advocate for the live export industry and travelled across a lot of uh, your, your markets, markets to understand the markets and communicate, communicate the benefits of live export back uh, to his home state of Queensland. Uh, Jeff, uh, uh, I will tell you uh, confidentially, of course, if no one else is here, is that uh, he said if, if MLA ever want to have a direct and immediate impact on price at Farmgate, we must protect our live export industry and invest in our live export industry. 
uh, and that's what we do at uh, MLA, and that's what um, the board has given us the, uh, the mandate to do. So have a wonderful day. Uh, that's the Summit LEP program. Uh, yes, there were only three slides. Thank you.